Hello and welcome to the session where we continue looking into the template that has been created to illustrate the various user interface elements uh, that we can integrate into our system and create an effective interface for our users. So this time we are looking at the, inter, uh, sorry, the infographics uh, section and under infographics we want to um, help the user understand our data a bit better and we do that through the use of these uh, progression bars and uh, radial circles and uh, we can also integrate with the text. So here we are demonstrating that we can modify the values in our system and change uh, this interface. So if we make creative use of our layouts and these elements, then it really helps the user understand uh, the data much better. So the goal, of course, is that the user must be able to just glance at uh, some dashboard and be able to understand uh, the status of the environment that he or she is operating in. And of course, uh, we want to be able to also influence the user in some ways. So we can use interfaces like that to, uh, to influence a user to take a particular action um, and to understand uh, things to take effective action. So let's look at uh, the code for creating these infographics. So if we go over here to our code, we can see uh, under create UE uh, in our main tabs, of course, we've got this uh, info tab. So FA info circle. So we can see uh, that's the uh, icon. And so that's in the tab info. And so to um, to draw to draw that for us, uh, we've got uh, show infographics. So let's look up the show infographics method, and that's down here. And so if we look in this method, we can see um, number one that we are uh, creating some values here. And just to explain what we're seeing, um, in settings, it might be the case that uh, whoever calls this function is going to send in an attribute called vals. But if that attribute doesn't exist, then we will uh, supply the values for vals and uh, we'll supply these values 25, 40, and 35 those add up to 100, right? Because uh, in what we are showing, um, these are basically fractions of something. So um, so these are percentages. <clears throat> so this is the notation. You see this uh, double pipe here is a logical OR. So in JavaScript, that's, an, that's how you show an OR. So we are saying here, um, settings.val, or vals, so if the system doesn't find vals in settings, right, then it will go ahead and, and say uh, undefined. And in JavaScript, undefined is, uh, is what we call falsy. So it, uh, the, um, the type uh, Boolean false uh, tells us uh, in effect that this doesn't exist. And so we are saying here, if this doesn't exist, then use these values. So that's the shorthand notation. You can go ahead and write, if settings has own property vals, then do something. Otherwise, uh, set array equals that. That would be a longhand way of doing it. So this is uh, just a quick way of making sure that we have some values in this variable vals. And then, of course, we go ahead and uh, find uh, where we are going to draw everything. And this time, we are going to clear the viewport before we do anything. And then the first thing we do is create a grid, left, right. So it's going to be call six and call six here. So equally uh, spaced columns. And then in uh, on the left-hand side, we create uh, the first bar. So uh, we use now the type AUE info prog bar. So infographics progress bar. So we use this um, as our first infographic. And we can provide a title for that. Uh, yep, so there's the title up there. And then we provide uh, the data for this bar graph. Uh, not bar graph, uh, for, this, uh, for this bar. And within this one bar, um, there are three uh, things we want to include. 
So we want to specify val for each bar here. So val uh, tells us uh, the, the number behind this. So we know 25, 40, and 35. So that's, uh, those are the, the three values that will go in here. You see in VELs, we've got uh, these entries. So obviously that's how we reference each entry in that array. And then we specify a color for each of those. So there are three types of things uh, that we are showing here. And uh, the, uh, the three things uh, to help us uh, visualize them better, we provide different colors for each of those. So you you choose a color here, and by the way, um, there are good color pickers out there, and uh, you you can go ahead and and just use a, a color picker. So if you type color picker in your in Google, then uh, you you get this color picker, right? So um, when you you choose your color. and then uh, this is the hex code for that. So the hexadecimal code, that corresponds to this uh, particular color, uh, you can pick quite easily uh, using this method. Okay. So you specify the color for each of the uh, items and then you can specify icons as well. So you specify, and these are just randomly chosen here. Um, so we can specify the icons and we've said before, you can use the icons section uh, in, the, in the same, a template to find uh, the suitable icons for whatever it is we are trying to show. Now, if we um, use this info, uh, yeah, this bar infographic uh, like so, it's going to assume that we want um, all the entries in one bar like this. And if it's one horizontal bar, then the only way we can show icons is uh, to the left and to the right. So for the stuff on the left, it will use the icon for whatever is there on the left and for, the, for what's on the right, it will use that icon. It doesn't know what to do with any icons in between, so it, it just doesn't try to draw them. So you don't see this arrow up there, right? So you could say that um, the default for an uh, info bar is uh, it should only be used for um, for data where there are two types. So if you are trying to show two things, then you can uh, use this. It, it's suitable for that. Um, but otherwise, uh, you would instead use the multi-bar approach. So you use the same type of object, AUE info prog bar, but you specify now that we want to use a template of type multi. And then uh, if we specify the exact same data, you can see here now each entry is on its own line and uh, we can see all the icons and you've got uh, a, a separate progress bar for each of those. So that's the multi uh, template. Then instead, if you want to use um, this kind of arrow style of thing to show uh, the, the value relative to something. So for example, um, if you want to show something is uh, uh, larger than something or equal to something. So um, up arrow means it's, uh, it's increasing in value. To the right means um, it's staying the same. And, and down arrow means it's, it's decreased. Um, you can do that using the template um, arrow. So if you use template arrow, and then here you specify up, down, or, or the same using the change attribute. So where you specify the data, um, the usual things here, you can specify a label. And then if you specify a change of one, then it will point up. If you specify zero, it will point uh, to the right. And if you specify minus one, it will point down, right? And it will uh, use these colors also to, uh, to indicate good and bad, I guess. So that's the template uh, arrow. And then here we start to see a bit of pro, uh, a bit of processing towards that. So let's say we want these uh, arrows to correspond to the numbers that are coming into the into the method. So <clears throat> we are creating a, a bit of logic here. So we are saying if a value is less than fifty, then give it a value of minus one. In other words, make it point down. 
If the value is more than 50, then make the value 1, so make the arrow point up. And then if it's equal to 50, which is what this else means, then uh, set it to 0. So we want to show all our numbers relative to 50, relative to a value of 50. And so you can see they all point down. So that's because our numbers are 25, 40, and 35. Those are all less than 50. So let's change this now. And we have uh, a form down here that we can use to change the values. And you can see the code for that form here. So it's the same as the form we described before. You add uh, AUE form, you specify fields, val1, val2, val3, and then you, um, in your button, you, you call uh, the same method. So show infographics. We are calling on show infographics when we click update because we know we want to redraw this whole page with the new numbers. Um, so that's what we can do there. And uh, we specify that uh, we don't know what the viewport is, but we know it must have been specified in the settings. So we just specify the viewport like that. And now the values uh, from that form we specify in here. So in our callback function in that button, uh, we specify form vals as the argument, and then we can pull out val1, val2, val3, which are the field names in that form. And then we have to render that viewport. So that means we have to redraw uh, the viewport. So render, you can read as uh, redraw. Okay, so let's change the numbers here. So let's leave 25. Let's uh, crank this up to 60. And so left over, so um, left over will be 15. So if we hit update, then you can see here the arrow is pointing up here. So it's 25, so that's down. Uh, 60 is more than 50, so that's pointing up. And then 15 um, is, uh, is less than 50, so that's pointing down. We can see also that um, the other numbers have also changed. So now 25, 60, and 15, 25, 60, and 15. Um, this didn't change because there was no logic behind this. Here we were just trying to demonstrate uh, up, le uh, up, right, and down. So if you look at the code for this batch, you can see here we, we had just specified um, numbers here. So that's why this one doesn't change. But everything else has changed, including these radial ones, uh, which we'll see, and, and the texture, which we'll see just now. So that's one way to control things. You can add in a form and you can redraw the page. And by the way, um, there's another way to do it as well. So remember we had created the status um, thing up here. And you can see that there's V1, V2, V3, and uh, we can click update here. So if you look in the logic, um, which is, Let's see, that's probably here, right? So when we first created the whole page in the status, right, we had uh, created calls, uh, set state callback. That means when the user goes ahead and changes the state. So let's, let's make this 10, 10, and 80. And if we click update, then you can see 10, 10, 80. Some of the text doesn't position too well. But anyway, you can see it has correctly drawn this page here. So this, um, this is also working. And if you look at uh, how this works, you can see uh, the state valves here. So when we click on, um, when we go here and change the state and when we click on update, then it's going to uh, run whatever function we put in here. So it's going to call on show infographics. It's going to send in these specific values from the, the state that the user has just changed. And it's going to redraw uh, that specific page. So that's, uh, that's also working. That's another way that we can change the numbers. OK, so coming back to our method, we've talked about the arrows. We've talked about the form here. And then uh, what's left is uh, the, uh, these radial progress bars. And so this is more of the same, right? We use also AUE info progress bar. And uh, we specify the, uh, the, the title. And we can specify uh, line colors. So the line color and the background color. 
so that's the line color and then that's the background color so we just specify those and uh, and then we use the the value so we specify val here so that will tell it how far to draw the circle you can see 80 percent goes all the way there and then 10 percent only goes there and uh, and so on so that's uh that's how we can do those radial bars and then uh, this is uh, more of the same. This is just uh, showing how to, uh, if you want to position them in a row, you can do it like this. You can, uh, and we know how to do it. So this is just some practice with the layout. So maybe a bit of revision if you like. So here we are creating uh, a row. So remember we can do it uh, using a grid or we can do it using uh, a row uh, specification. And, uh, and so we create, um, we create this block here, which has text in it. So we put some text in it, and then we specify uh, a row. And then in that row, so circle row, uh, we can add in uh, these uh, uh, these radial progress bars here as well. And uh, you can see that the, uh, the we, we've created a bit of space around it. So if we didn't include call three, then these bars would be stuck one right next to the other so we can create a bit of space just uh, by specifying the class here the rest is pretty much what we've seen already um, here in the text uh, this has been included just so that you can see we can also generate reports like this right so you can see that the numbers in this uh, text here have also changed uh, because we've changed the state here so the string, uh, so, so it's not the case that only these uh, fancy kind of uh, graphical things can change. You can also change the, the boring old text as well. So here you can see in our text the value shown in this infographic R. And we have talked about this before. We said if we use the back ticks, then we can use references to variables in the string as well. So we specify strings and then we use dollar curly brackets and then we use the, the variable um, reference and then that's going to substitute the value of the variable into the string. Right, so that's how uh, we can uh, update strings as well. And I guess that's it for this section. Right, so that's um, some basic elements, but through creative use of these elements, you can create um, a system that the user can use to uh, really understand the, the data better. So instead of showing tables and tables of data, right, um, so you can use this style of thing if, if, you, um, if you are wanting the user to interact with the data. But when you want the user to view data and understand uh, what the data um, implies, or, or if you want to create an implication from the data, if you want to form a picture in the user's mind, then these are the types of uh, interface elements to use.